So today's cup of joe lesson, the creativity faucet. Such a good analogy. Unfortunately, I can't take credit for it. I came across this from uh, somebody I follow on Twitter, Julian Shapiro. If you're on Twitter and looking for folks to, uh, to follow, I create several different lists on Twitter. There's a list I subscribe to just called Smart. It's usually a list of people that are, I consider clear thinkers, writers, people I learn from. He's on this list and uh, I recommend giving him a follow because he tweets out a lot of really good stuff for writers and uh, creators. And one thing that caught my eye was an article he wrote and I really wanted to share it with you, but it's about this creativity faucet. And he talks about going through, and I went through and, and watched the things that he was talking about as well. He talks about watching a documentary interview with Ed Sheeran and another one with uh, Neil Gaiman, uh, both who were talking about a very similar process involved in creativity. Ed Sheeran for writing his songs, he explains in that little YouTube video clip there about how he comes up with good songs. And it almost is a mirror image of what Neil Gaiman is talking about for coming up with his good writing. Both of them start with writing. As I always say, everything starts with writing. But how do we go from just writing to getting the good stuff? And I love the analogy here of this creativity faucet. And I highlighted this part in this article because I thought he said it perfectly. And he said, here's the thing. Ed Sheeran and Neil Gaiman are in the top 0.000001% of their fields. They're among, say, the 25 people in the world who consistently generate blockbuster after blockbuster. So if two world class creators share the exact same process, I lean in. And I do the same as well. I always look for patterns. One of the things I heard early in not just my business career, but just in life that has been such good advice is to find people that are doing what you want to do, find people that excel in their craft and model, model them. Now, everybody has a unique set of skill sets. Everybody has different talents. Everybody has a different zone of genius, but we can learn so much from those who have a similar process. And when you see, just like he mentioned here, when you see two people share the same process, that's when you really want to lean in. And so the process is very simple, not necessarily easy, but very simple. And I love this analogy, and I think you will too. The analogy talks about visualizing your creativity as a backed up pipe of water. The first mile of piping is packed with that nasty, gunky wastewater. This wastewater, here's the thing, must be emptied before the clear water arrives. And because your pipe has only one faucet, there's no shortcut to achieving clarity other than first emptying the wastewater. Pretty good visual, isn't it? So we all have one pipe, one faucet, where all of our creative ideas flow through. But there's a bunch of wastewater that we first have to empty. Isn't that such a good visual? Once the bad ideas are emptied, strong ideas begin to arrive. And that's when we start getting that flow of fresh, clear water. I talked about this in the very beginning before we started our session, how I had some muddy thinking and I literally picture that muddy water where you, you kind of have this creative spark, but you're just not sure. So you have to spend the time. You have to spend the time writing. You have to spend the time fleshing it out. And that fleshing out can look different for different people but it all involves action. And I love how he puts it here. He says, here's why. Once you've generated enough bad output, your brain starts to reflexively identify which elements cause the badness. Then it begins to avoid them. You start pattern matching novel ideas with greater intuition. It reminds me of watching my son go through his karate class. So he's been doing it for several months now and he's learning these new techniques, which he's never learned before. And one of the things the instructors always tell them to do is to practice their techniques in front of a mirror. And they're all gonna be bad at first. They're all gonna be wrong. They're all gonna feel clunky. But the process of watching yourself do the bad moves, do them wrong, your brain can pick up on these patterns and correct itself. Same thing with our writing, same thing with our creativity, same thing with our art, whatever that is. You've got to first be able to put out the bad stuff. You've got to be able to put out the terrible stuff for your brain to recognize it and go, okay, yeah, that is terrible and here's why and how can I fix that? You can't skip this part in the process. I cringe when I look through some of the old things that I put out on the internet when I first started. Some of those first videos that I created, oh my gosh, I go back and look at them every once in a while or I might be going through an old photo album Album and I'm like, I put that out there. Oh my goodness. But I had to. You have to get the stuff out there. You have to put the bad stuff before you can find the good stuff. It's just part of the process. Now, sadly, this is what happens though. Most creators, they never get past the wastewater. 
They resist their bad ideas. We can't resist them. We have to just recognize that it's part of the creative process. Most people start putting stuff out there and what do they do? They compare their muddy water with the other creators who have moved past the muddy water and are now experiencing that crystal clear creative flow. And they're comparing the two going, wait a minute, my water's muddy, theirs is clear. I must not be good enough. I must not be cut out for this. I must not have talent. They have talent. I don't have talent because my water is muddy and theirs is clear. Now, the big difference is they've pushed past through their muddy water. We don't always see everybody's muddy water. It's like the old analogy with the iceberg, you know? We don't see the huge structure underneath the water. We only see what comes above the water. We don't see the years of pain and failure and self-doubt that these success stories, these overnight success stories had to go through in order to achieve their success. So we first gotta get through the muddy water. And if you're not happy with your output, instead of berating yourself, instead of coming down on yourself, instead of, oh my gosh, giving up, take heart because knowing that if you just keep pushing through, you're gonna do what most creators won't do. And your chance of success therefore increases exponentially. Neil and Ed know they're not superhuman. They simply respect the reality of human creativity. Their brain has a linear pipeline for creativity and the pipe needs clearing. In every creative session, they allot time for emptying the wastewater. They're not worrying whether clear water will eventually come. It always does. We talk about it all the time. It takes a while to get in the zone, we say. It takes a while to get the creativity flowing because we gotta empty that wastewater first. Sometimes it takes five minutes. Sometimes it takes 30 seconds. You're kind of already emptying the wastewater. Sometimes it may take 30. Sometimes it may take the majority of the session and all of a sudden in the last 10 minutes, you start getting some clear water. Just know that it's part of the creative process. Nothing is wrong with you. It's just part of the process. Now it reminds me of this thing I heard from, um, it was on a Tim Ferriss podcast with, I believe I'm pronouncing this right, Safi Bacall. Now this is where I originally heard the right FBR acronym. Now, I'll actually spell it out here because we talked about it a little bit. Right FBR stands for fast, bad, and wrong. No, there's not a typo at the end. That's there on purpose. You get the idea. Fast, bad, and wrong. You're giving yourself permission because you know, you gotta get the muddy water out first. And so if you're just thinking, that's your only job, I'm supposed to write fast, bad, and wrong at first. That's exactly what I'm supposed to do. You give yourself that freedom, the liberty to push your ideas forward. And you ease up on yourself. You eliminate or silence or put your internal critic on mute. You hit the mute button because you say, you don't matter right now because this is what I'm doing on purpose. I'm writing fast, bad, and wrong. In fact, uh, this is an actual part of that interview with Tim Ferriss. This is what he said about writing FBR. He says, terrible style, terrible grammar, terrible word choice, wrong facts, etc. That liberates you to follow the narrative thread and just keep going and going with it. And don't stop and backtrack because every time you stop, it's like a car going down the highway. It's easy to stop, but then you have to spend all this fuel to get back up to speed and you might not get there. You discover that when you start writing and start pulling on that narrative thread, it's really surprising where it goes, but only if you go fast, not if you go slow. So there is definitely something to going fast, opening that faucet all the way open, letting the dirty water flow, writing fast, bad, and wrong. There's only one pipe, remember. There's no shortcut. You gotta get through the mucky, dirty water. So remember, if you wanna get to the clean water, you first gotta get the dirty water out of your head, get it onto paper, get it onto the digital screen, whatever it is, and you gotta go fast. You can't go slow. You can't backtrack. You can't let the critic go in. You can't try to edit. You just gotta go. You gotta get it out of the way. I like to literally picture myself going in to like a kitchen sink and just turning on the faucet full blast, right? Like we don't wanna just open it like a little bit. We just open that sucker up. So picture the next time you're sitting down to a writing session and you, you arrive with your internal critic like we all do, feel like he's just like sitting on our shoulder half the time. And I picture myself literally opening up the nozzle full blast and I just start writing. And I'm not, it's not dripping out, it's just going fast. And I know that, hey, I'm just writing fast, bad and wrong in order to get the muck out of the way so that the clear water. I hope that's a good visual for you. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. These visuals literally help me to 
think about something when I'm in the middle of doing the art, when I'm doing the craft, when I'm doing the creating. And these are so important because sometimes these little visuals can be the difference between you quitting, you giving up, you criticizing yourself, having that negative self-talk, sabotaging yourself, distracting yourself because now, you know, your uh, amygdala has kicked in, your fight or flight response has kicked in because you feel anxiety, because it feels fearful. You're worried about what your critics are going to think when you publish this, but none of that matters when you're in the actual process of creating. Your only job is to write fast, bad, and wrong. All the pressure goes away. And so if you have to, find a good picture of a faucet. Find a good picture of some muddy water next to the clear water. Print it out. Put it next to your computer screen. Put it next to your desk to remind yourself. And, and go ahead and write on there. Write FBR. Remind yourself. I'm just going to write fast, bad, and wrong. It's part of the creative process. I've got to clear the pipes. And for those of you who are already doing this, you can now have a visual of like, you know why it's working. For me, it's another way to really just not be so hard on myself because all of us creatives, we are. And uh, we've got to be able to push through. Those are the ones who win. And yeah, remember, don't judge your mucky water with somebody else's clear water. <laughs> They've just cleared the pipes already. And it's just not fair to judge. I think that takes a constant reminder, doesn't it? It's just natural to like come across a brilliant piece of writing, a well-produced video, a beautiful, you know, helpful course, whatever it is. And immediately we look at that and we go, doesn't look like mine, but you got to stop yourself, right? And you remind yourself of all these things that we know, but we have that knee jerk reaction to compare. So we've got to catch ourselves. All right, everyone, I'm going to let you get back to it. A big unchained writer group hug, high fives all around. Don't forget, you know the drill. Give yourself that good old pat on the back because you deserve it. Forgive yourself for any lack of progress, any berating yourself. Today's a new day. We're going to start fresh. Write FBR. Clear the pipes. And let's keep it going. Remember, only if you go fast, not if you go slow. So let's go fast together. Look forward to being back with you real soon. I'll be cheering for you. Bye, guys.